Congress who are sitting on the fence. Former Bush administration press secretary and now Fox News contributor Dana Perino joins me now. Uh, so do you think any of the, you know, whether it was Arlen Specter or Chris Dodd or any of the other folks who organized these, do you think their uh, views on all this would change by what they encountered? I don't necessarily think their views will change, but I think they'll realize that their politics have changed. And I listen to those two ladies there, and I think this reminds me of another fight that we fought in the Bush administration, which was immigration reform. Uh, we felt very yeah. strongly that we had the right policy, but people across <laughs> right. America definitely didn't think yes. that we did. And then they started coming forward, and you realize you're not going to be able to beat them. This It was really interesting to me. It would be great if uh, Barack Obama could actually listen to these two ladies that, in a way that they're not seeing you know, the... the, the, the frustrations that are being expressed so vocally at these town halls. It'd be good for him to see that, too. But to really listen, because they really they have really strong feelings. They're convicted, and they've done their homework. I was very impressed by what they had to say. Well, I, I heard Anna, I don't know whether it was Anna or Karen that was agreeing, but on the immigration issue, do you think it was the same sort of thing? Go ahead, Anna or Karen. Oh. I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize you were talking to us. Honest. Yeah, it was me. I was I was agreeing with the immigration issue, because um, I, I I I came here legally. I followed the law of the land, mm. and the problem that we're having right now is that nobody's following the law of the land. Washington D.C. has has become the district of corruption. So <laughs> anything goes at this She's point, and, and we're not being represented. <laughs> she does actually. Uh, my wife feels the same. My wife is an immigrant, but she feels the same. You know, went through so much trouble yeah. to do everything legally, and uh, now the other people get everything. But I, I got to ask about the rhetoric. Uh, you sure. mentioned uh, what the ladies were saying. The attacks that we are now getting on the private sector by the administration and by members of Congress. We had Nancy Pelosi uh, s calling villains, all the private insurers villains, suggesting that there was something evil about it. We had Chris Dodd talking about the, the mortgage uh, servicer, how they were, servicers, how they were now the evil ones. These attacks on the private sector lead one to question whether the private sector is better than the public sector at administering these, these uh, services. But, David, their villains have have transformed over time. Okay, so like two weeks ago, they were like, we're going to go after Senator DeMint individually. Then they decided to go after conservative talk radio hosts. Then they decided to go after incredibly the media and blame the media for coming up with their August deadline. And then when the f tapes were rolled and they realized, oh, I guess that doesn't actually Well, because the out. media is all in with the Obama administration, <laughs> Well, not necessarily, but, but uh, they, the media didn't come up with the August deadline. They came up with the August deadline. Then they right. decided and settled on, we're going to go after the insurance companies. But what's interesting to me is that I wonder if those insurance companies think, gosh, should we have sat down with Barack Obama two months ago at the White House? Should we have yeah. tried to cut a deal? Should we have stood with him in the Rose yeah. Garden? If what was going to happen was that everybody was going to turn on us at the end of the day. My problem with their rhetoric is this. The problems with the bill aren't about the opponents. The problems aren't about the tactics that are being used. They're not about these town halls. The problem is the merits of the bill. And America has understood right. it, and they are speaking out, That's and then right. they're now being villainized. Well, but, but to use this kind of rhetoric and to set up the equation of it's either the private sector or the public sector when we all know how badly managed the public sector is. In my is. opinion, what the White House should be doing is, and they have the opportunity to do it with a fantastically popular president who has a really wonderful way of speaking and bringing people together like we saw at the Beer Summit. They have decided today instead to <laughs> absolutely further divide the country. Instead mm -hmm. of trying to unify. And to me, they're still fighting the campaign from last year, but the election was held in November. Let's unify this panel with other members of our panel. We have Rod Kurtz, Matt McCall, and Stacey Dello. Uh, Stacey joins us from San Francisco. Stacey, did, was there anything on par with what we saw in these other states happening in California, where folks who thought they would be selling this uh, to a receptive audience were met with protests? Well, it's interesting, you know, we've actually voted twice in our legislature here on single-payer systems, and it's passed twice. We've just never been able to get a governor to sign it. Um, you know, Obama's going to be making his Western <laughs> tour, so I think we're going to see a little bit more from the West Coast coming up. Do you think, however, Ooh, these guys were surprise. surprised, Matt? I mean, you know, here you have folks who set up these town meetings thinking that they were going to have a chance to convince an audience. Instead, they were told, no way, we don't want this 
government option. I think they were definitely caught off guard because for the fat past few years, all these rallies have been hooray, hooray, let's go, you know, Obama, we love you. I mean, but we're seeing that turn a bit. And they keep the, a lot of the media is putting the blame on these radical right, that, that's, you know, the conservatives out there that are, that are going there and trying to cause a ruckus. I don't think that's true. And just speaking, you know, hearing the two ladies speak, I think this is actually the masses of America. I think that the mass population believes this. Rod, frankly, that's like, a frankly. lot of the same stories that you heard at the Tea Parties, where they were being villainized, to use the administration's work, as, as part of the Republican Party, as part of the right-wing extremists, when, in fact, there were folks who were using their own pocket Well, chips. this was definitely not in the Obama playbook. I, I don't think they thought this was going to happen. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. And I have a feeling I know why these crowds are so energized. They're drinking all those lattes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I think you, you know, uh, a lot of people describe the, uh, the chart that the Republican Republicans have put out as candy land, you know, all the different right. uh, shoots and ladders to, to get to your health provider. I think you might be living in Candyland, though, if you say that 96% of people are truly happy with their health insurance. I mean, I think we can all agree the system could use some work. It's but not to necessarily... paint them as the villains and the government charging in on a white steed as the savior is nonsense. No, absolutely. And this is the democratic process in place. I can think of no better place to do this interview than in Philadelphia, which this is really the True. origins of democracy. So I love seeing people get engaged. We talk yeah, so absolutely. much about uh, Americans are apathetic. They don't get out and vote. Here you have people actually taking time out of their, out of their day to get involved Karen, in the conversation. Karen, and let me let me ask you, do you have a lot of emails coming into you now and phone calls of, of people? Is this spreading like wildfire or what? Oh, oh absolutely. Um, I have got uh, hundreds of emails every morning. And also, I am the bus lady. I am the bus coordinator <laughs> to get everybody from the Philadelphia area to D.C. on September 12th for the March on Washington, 912dc.org. Little plug there. Oh, no. And so I'm mov moving everybody from Montgomery County <laughs> down to D.C. And we're going to take our tea party, um, Philadelphia Tea Party. Yay. Down to D.C. Okay. And you should Anna, be drinking tea, not lattes. Anna, the tea. question is, yeah. what, what happens next? Besides, besides this, are you advising people to write to their Congress people or what? Sure. Well, we're, what our group is doing, we have grown from four members to about 150 right now. And what we're doing, we want to motivate the forces. We're putting scorecard surveys out there for judicial candidates for the November elections. We're going to interview them. We're going to have a forum. And we're going to do the same thing next year for the 2010 elections. Because the change is now, is in 2010, we need to bring change to Washington, yes. D.C. Well, yes. mentioning the word score, yes. scorecard or scoreboard, you were close to scoreboard. You're certainly welcome back here anytime. <laughs> Anna Puig, thank you very much. Karen Stocking, great to see you. Dana Perino, thank you very much. Take we'll care. see more of the panel in a moment. We want to know what you think. The town hall meeting protests. Are they a buy 